Let's talk about section 4.5, which covers indirect argument, contradiction, and contraposition. And in this video, I'm just going to talk to you about what those two techniques involve, and you'll see some examples in a separate video. So, beginning with the method of proof by contradiction. Now, this process may seem a little familiar to you because back in chapter two, we talked about these knights and knaves puzzles as a way of learning about this contradiction rule. And the contradiction rule was that if you suppose something and that leads you to a contradiction, then what you supposed was false. Okay, and we use that in those knights and knaves puzzles to try to determine whether these individuals were knights or knaves, that is whether they were always telling the truth or always telling falsehoods. And by supposing something that we thought was false, if we could show that that led to a contradiction, then we could conclude that yes, what we supposed was false. Okay, similar idea here in writing proofs. So we're going to suppose the statement to be proved is false. Uh, that is, we suppose the negation of the statement is true. We show that that supposition leads to a contradiction. And there are a lot of different ways that a contradiction could come up. We could say that, okay, now we've shown that this, e this integer is both even and odd there's a contradiction. Or we could say, we've shown that this is both positive and negative, there's a contradiction. Um, or, you know, any number of things. Those are just a couple of, you know, straightforward examples. Um, and then finally, we conclude that the statement to be proved is in fact true. That's the idea behind uh, proof by contradiction. And the reason that this method is um, is something that's really important for us to see is both that it it works very differently than what we've looked at before but more importantly in certain kinds of statements proof uh, a direct proof would be very difficult where a proof by contradiction might be comparatively much easier so there are times when when the statement that we're trying to prove really lends itself to the, this method. Okay, so it's not just an alternative that you can, you know, take it or leave it. This is really going to um, make things easier in certain cases. And the same is true by proof by contraposition. Now, this is a little different, but it's still a type of indirect proof because it involves, rather than supposing the negation of the original statement, we're rewriting the original statement um, in its contrapositive form. And we know that the contrapositive of a conditional statement is logically equivalent to that statement. So we're replacing the given statement with something that's easier to work with, um, namely its contrapositive. And again, in some cases, this will be beneficial to us. In other cases, there's no need to do this. So it's it's a method that sometimes is very helpful, sometimes not necessary. So we're going to express the given statement in the form for all x and d if p of x and q of x. Okay. Very common, you know, that when we're writing these uh, proofs, that we might be given something that looks like that, or maybe it doesn't look like that, but it could be put in that form. And you don't necessarily have to actually rewrite it. You can sometimes do this mentally and just think, well, if this were an if then, what would it look like? But whenever we're writing a proof like this, generally the way we would start is say, okay, let's suppose P of X. Okay, but we're not going to do that in proof by contraposition, because what we're doing is replacing it with the contrapositive. For all x and d, if not q of x, then not p of x. 
and then we prove the contrapositive with a direct proof. Okay, so we are doing a, a regular direct proof after we replace the original statement with its contrapositive. And that's what proof by contraposition is. The next topic that we'll get into is actually the start of the next chapter, um, chapter five, and the first section in chapter five is about sequences. Hope you found this video helpful. We'll see you in the next one.